What's up guys? My name is Mike. I am software engineer algorithmic forex trader and recently I live in Thailand as an expat and and welcome you to this series of videos where I share my journey on developing the trading application by my own. And anyway, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit the like, subscribe, check my previous videos of this series. And yeah, if you like algo trading, forex trading, basically watching me sharing my journey of developing the trading application, the trading platform. We also have a Discord group. So if you're interested on, you know, talking with the community around this channel, you can join Discord group and yeah, we can talk to each other. Anyway, without any further ado, let's start. In the previous video, I wanted to code the connections to the exchanges, but I ended up with coding the basic GUI form. I wanted to use the .NET MAUI, but after a few tests and researches, I, I decided to stick with Avalonia because this is much more better platform when it comes to cross-platform applications, in my opinion. So I developed the basic GUI in Avalonia. I made it very, very simple. So I decided to, to go with the white black approach or when it comes to styling. I used the basic Fluent theme from the, the Avalonia framework and I ended up with something like this. What happened after I created the simple GUI? Well, I coded the connections. So yeah, what was the approach? I mean, for the MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5, I had like my old libraries. So I used them to connect to the servers. Basically the approach was simple. You know, before when I was designing the basic, the, the basic classes, basic objects for, for the connections to the exchanges, I made a split of the trade data engine and market data engine so i made it like this that uh, on the connect function i was initializing the connection to the exchanges to the forex brokers and then when i established the connection i passed the connection object as an inject to the trade data engine and market data engine and from those objects i was handling all the subscribe unsubscribe from market data open the trade, close trade and stuff like this. So this is the, the logic of uh, business separation, I would say, in, in my platform. So yeah, I started from the MetaTrader 4, then I moved to MetaTrader 5, uh, then I coded another connection and then it hit me. I needed something, something, something that will produce a big amount of quotes, big amount of market data, so I can test the throughput of the application. So I don't know what is the, the level of, of my audience of you guys when it comes to technical stuff. So basically the throughput of the system is the, in my case, is just the amount of market data that my software can handle at the same time. So basically it measures how fast I am able to consume market data. So basically it measures how fast I am able to consume market data. So let's say I can have a throughput of uh, 10,000 quotes per second, or I can have a throughput of 20 million quotes per second. So what I did, I created a, another connection, but I, I called it a dummy connection to exchange. I think the, the name of my adapter was the bench trader i think yeah i called it bench trader or from benchmark so anyway ah my skateboard is running away from me anyway i called it bench trader so what this connection does it basically it does pretty much nothing but when you put your uh, properties when you put your input parameters for for the connection i created a field where i can define how many quotes it will produce per second and if I will put nothing it will keep on sending quotes infinitely so like infinite loop that will keep on producing quotes so what's the purpose of it I mean because the quotes are dummy it's just the random number from 0 to 1 so the purpose of this is to put a very 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 high load of quotes into my application into my software so I can see what is the throughput so I did it let me know guys in the comments, how do you think, what is the throughput that I received on my app? Because you know, 
first, when I first coded this benchmark method, I had like 50,000 quotes per second and it was not good because, you know, imagine that you want to subscribe to all four experts from, let's say, 10 exchanges. It's gonna be way more than 10,000 10, quotes per second. So I went very, very carefully through the hot path. I made some changes. I was mainly, I was looking for, for stuff like boxing to avoid boxing or to, to pass the memory pointer of the quote instead of pa passing some strings or to avoid any kind of memory allocation. So yeah, they are basically like low latency programming principles. So I went very, very, very carefully through this, uh, you know, through this code. I made some changes and guys, it made a huge difference because how do you think? What was the throughput that I received after my changes? So the throughput was 15 million per second. 15, one five, not five zero. But yeah, 15 million quotes per second. So I think this result is very, very good. I'm proud of it because I spent it like, like my last three years, I was coding, testing different approaches to, to have very low latency and big throughput. And yeah, I think the game changer was when I discovered the Elmax Disruptor library, of course, the port to the .NET that you can find on the GitHub. So basically learning how to code in low latency mode and uh, what to pay attention for. And uh, of course, yeah, the, the experience because I was pretty much very obsessed about this. And guys, I made it. 15 million quotes per second. I'm very, very proud of it. And now I can finally focus on developing strategies and different modules because the core is okay. 15 million quotes per second is, is very, very good. So, so yeah, pretty much it all pays off. So right now I have a working core module for consuming market data. I have connection to MetaTrader 5, MetaTrader 4. I also coded the connection to the Rhythmic Trader. You know, in future, I, I will need to also do some connections for like LMAX API, Fix API and stuff like this, but we're gonna do this in the future. And anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. And if you are very, very interested about what's going to happen next, subscribe, hit the like button, put some comment if you have any ideas how to improve my software. And uh, yeah, pretty much it. Let's wait for another episode. And me, I'm going to have some fun right now with my surf skate. Yeah. See you in the next video.